So the first time in 2018, Toyota decided to put the safety sense into the Toyota Tacomas and 4Runners lineup. As you can see, the Toyota logo does look a little bit different. It is has some weird clear covering on it, and if you didn't know, this is a radar system. It pushes out a radar frequency and then there's a sensor in it to absorb the radar and see how far the vehicle is in front of it. Combining with that there is also a camera system to make this system uh, fairly complex actually. You can see it right there. These two pieces combine the camera and the radar actually give you a lot of features. Now the first one's really cool because uh, when I first started learning how to drive, my grandfather told me a couple things, and the uh, one of the things was that um, if it, there's ever a human being and you're driving, you want to avoid them as much as possible. Like, if you need to crash, like that's what you're gonna do. And so, um, with this truck, there's also a feature for that, and it has pedestrian warning and braking. So what if a person walks in front of your vehicle while you're driving and you don't notice, it could potentially alert you and, and the screen will yell break, break, break. And if you don't end up braking, it will potentially actually stop. Now with the pre-collision system, there are three main levels. There's a warning, there's a brake assist, and then there's braking. So for the first one, it's kind of self-explanatory. All it's going to do is display a big red sign on your dashboard that shows brake, brake, brake. It's going to beep at you. And if you brake and get out of the situation, you're good to go. The second one is the brake assist. If it's if you're going pretty fast at a car or pedestrian and you it, it's warning you, you push the brake a little bit, it'll actually push it so you won't run into that object in front of you. And then if you're just totally not paying attention, then it'll do everything for you and brake. Once it stops, it holds it for a couple of seconds and then it'll let off the brake. So what you need to do is actually compress the brake so you, you stay stopped or just start driving whatever you need to do. Now there are a few limitations. The warning system is between 7 miles an hour and plus 110 miles an hour. The pre collision brake assist is between 20 and 110 and the uh, pre-collision braking is between 7 and 110. It's actually kind of interesting that the brake assist is the only difference. It's at 20 miles an hour instead of 7 miles an hour. Now diving into the system, um, what you want to do is go all the way to the right and you can see you have pre-collision system. So you just want to push right here and you can either turn it on or off so it says pre-collision system is off but i don't want that so what i'm going to do is turn it back on and it, you can see it actually changed my sensitivity changed it to the middle uh, setting so that is the close range setting that'll be the least sensitive and then this will be the highest sensitivity personally i set it on the highest one just to be a little bit safe um, if it's turning on for you a lot with the highest sensitivity you might want to bring it down or you might want to be just a little bit better of a driver another way if it uh, doesn't work is if you're driving in like a snowstorm or something like that and everything gets caked on the front of your grill it will warn you and tell you that the pre-collision system will not work it even has a little light that turns on and illuminates to tell you that it's just not going to work for the lane departure warning, what it's doing is it's using the camera system to check out the lines on the side of the road, either the yellow or white lines. And I have found that this Toyota Tacoma does a really good job with that. I drove in a Honda CRV and it was, I had to go up to like 30 miles an hour to actually like find the lanes and sometimes it wouldn't even find them at all this truck actually does a really good job with doing that I'm actually really impressed with it you're able to easily turn off the lane departure warning just by pushing the button right here and you can see on the top right here that it um, illuminates so if it's green it's on and if it's there's nothing there it's off
it, you notice that it does give us a warning system, lane departure alert, unavailable below approximately 32 miles an hour. And surprisingly enough, I've had it happen before below 32 miles an hour. With the lane departure warning, there's also like a sway warning. And I, I don't really know what it is too much, but all you do is if you're swaying and kind of getting tired in the lane, it will warn you and tell you to like wake up or something like that. And I've tried to trigger it, like just swaying in the side and like in the lane a little bit, like going left and right, left and right, like what it says in the manual and haven't been able to turn it on. So maybe you have to do it very aggressively for a good amount of time and then it'll actually turn on. The main reason why I think that the lane departure warning isn't uh, lane departure assist is because it is a larger vehicle and as you know, a lot of people do mod the Toyota Tacomas and 4Runners. They lift them, they put really big tires on them, rims, all this gear. And that is definitely an effect how the vehicle steers. And so the car is not really going to be able to learn what you put on. If it's like a king shock or whatever, they're not going to, the car is not going to know that and be able to adjust the steering properly. In the smaller cars, people can't really adjust the, um, ride height and and everything as much as the Toyota Tacomas. Now to get to all of the settings you go to LDA which is the lane departure uh, alert and you can see the sensitivity, sensitivity um, depending on how far you are off the lane it'll turn on I'll put that all the way up and there's the little coffee cup that's telling us if we're getting tired and we're swaying in the lane it will warn me so let me put that all the way up as well because I've never actually had it turn on. All right, enough talking. Let's go ahead and drive it. For the cruise control, all you do is push this lower button right here you can see it illuminates that light on the top left and it says it's radar ready. And so um, I can change the distance. Three is the furthest distance away, second, and that is the closest away. And keep in mind, it depends on the speed. So if you're going 80 miles an hour, it'll probably keep eight car lengths away at the lowest one, and then maybe say 11, and then maybe say like 10 or nine car lengths. And then when you're at 40 miles away, um, it's gonna be four car lengths away at the l least one and then maybe six and then maybe five something like that so the fur so the faster you go the uh, more distance it'll go away so if the cars in front of you are slowing down then the um, v your vehicle will actually like come up closer so it won't have to brake as hard which is pretty neat now below 25 miles an hour it will actually uh, disengage and you will have to hit the brake pedal so there's 25 and it tells you that it will no longer uh, use the cruise control and it's completely disengaged as you can see if I go over to the vehicle settings I have my distance where I want it to be I can change the distance right here that's the furthest distance that's the second and that is the uh, closest distance you can see the white lines are illuminated. The left one is the um, dotted lines and the right one is the solid line. It can definitely pick up the solid line a lot easier than the um, dotted line. But as you can see, it is doing a really good job. If I veer over to the right here, it beeps at me and, and shows that the line is orange and also illuminates the uh, orange part right there which is pretty neat so the cruise control will pick up a vehicle about 850 feet in front of it as you can see a car did just turn in front of me so it just picked up that vehicle now one of my pet peeves with this truck is the cruise control it just likes to rev up when it doesn't really need to say if the vehicle in front of me decides to uh, move away what it's really going to do is just rev up super quick and it doesn't really I don't really want it to do that I really wish that it had three different d 
distances and then in, like an eco mode or something like that so it's going to break easily and uh, hit the throttle fairly easy as well but uh, actually the braking is really impressive it's not too aggressive for my taste and as you can see since we slowed down about 65 miles an hour we are a bit closer to that vehicle than we would be if we were going 80 miles an hour if I uh, veer over to this left lane here you can see I'm getting pretty close to it and I'm about on top of it so it's pretty accurate you can see the vehicle actually like moves over to the left side the uh, uh, white lane turns flashing orange and also on the top right uh, it flashes orange as well just in case you're not in this window setting so say do I move I move to the right side uh, there's no more vehicle I use the blinker so the lane departure is not going to turn on and I have both lanes back on again now it's throttling up to 3500 rpm which I don't really care about and you can see that we're coming up to a vehicle it recognizes the vehicle and you can see the vehicle turned over and then now we are just going to keep on rolling here it does not notice that vehicle in front of us that's because it's past that 180 feet and now it just recognized it there we go so it recognizes it pretty far away so it doesn't if you're going a faster speed ideally it will not hit the brakes and it will just uh, throttle down so let's go ahead and turn over here as you can see when I use the blinker the lane departure alert turns off and the uh, cruise control is working we're going up a hill about 70 miles an hour it's got a downshift here promise you if I were driving the vehicle it would not do that now this vehicle is going to cut in front of us and it does hit the brakes fairly hard just to give us a nice little distance there drops down so that's what I'm talking about it brakes super hard and then it has to hit the gas to compensate now the last feature is the auto high beams and we are going to test that at night so we will see you in a few hours and if you don't want to blind someone in front of you and you're not exactly sure if it's working or not all you have to do is push the button and it says auto high beams ready turn on high beam to activate and so as you can see there's cars if I turn them on it's going to show auto but the camera does sense a bunch of cars in front of me so it's not actually going to turn on the high beams which is really neat so even with the auto high beams on and just a few cars in front of me it is still not going to turn on So as you can see, there's no cars in front of me. And then right when those cars show up over there, it turns right off. And I've never had anyone flash their high beams at me because the truck is too late at turning the high beams off. It's actually pretty impressive. Definitely enjoy it. There it goes again, turns on and turns off.